don't own anything or do anything or guarantee anything and don't know anything. If you can satisfy that, then you probably won't get sued. But who is the manager of your entities? Because when somebody sues an entity, they're going to look and see who the manager is, who's the president, who's the vice president. So you may not want to be that person. And for a lot of clients, we will form a Colorado or Wyoming LLC. You can't tell who owns it by going to the websites there, and we will make that the manager of the operating LLC so that nobody can even tell who the manager is, and so that when they search your name on the Secretary of State website, you don't come up. Your name doesn't even come up. So they can't see what you own from your Secretary of State website. We often do the same thing with property. So the deed might be right now held by John Smith. We, if John Smith wants to continue to own the property, maybe you need to for creditor protection or homestead tax advantage, we could put the property into a land trust and make the Wyoming LLC the manager of the land trust. So then the only thing that shows in the public records is the name of a Wyoming LLC. And when they go to see who owns the Wyoming LLC, they can't see it. They, they don't know. So they, they, so they can't, you know, target you. Now, what is a land trust? A land trust is the same thing as a revocable trust. And all it is is it's a one-person agreement. So Hamden sets up the Hamden-Baskin Land Trust. He signs an unexciting agreement, which says that the trustee of the land trust is Wyoming LLC. The beneficiary of the land trust is Hamden. Hamden has the right to direct the Wyoming LLC on what to do, but the deed is in the name of the Wyoming LLC. So when people go to the Secretary of State to see who owns that property, all they see is the Wyoming LLC, and they can't see who the manager is. Now, we could, and Hamden owns that land trust. So the land trust says on Hamden's death, his wife can take over the land trust, and she can own the land trust. So then on Hamden's death, that very moment of his death, his wife can be very happy to own that land trust and to manage it with the anonymity continued. Notwithstanding the anonymity, though, there is no such thing as privacy once you have a judgment against you. Because once you have a judgment against you, the courts allow discovery. Discovery means subpoenas. Discovery means interrogatories. Discovery means depositions, and in those subpoenas, interrogatories, and depositions, you have to explain all these entities. And sometimes when we do that, we don't give them the chart. We don't give them the easy answers. We give them boxes of documents. In fact, the notebooks that I've prepared for some of you, we would not give it to them in that organized form so that it would take them a long time, you know, to figure it out but eventually they'll figure it out. So you can't rely just on the privacy. Any questions on that? The, these revocable trusts, it's the one that Hamden has with the land, it's very similar to my estate planning revocable trust. I'm the grantor, I'm the trustee, it doesn't own anything until I die or it might own some things. But then when I die, Marcia can take it over immediately or she could be co-trustee depending on how I've drafted it, and then it's held for her health, education, and maintenance. So that answers that question. These trusts are disregarded for income tax purposes. So they don't need a tax return, they don't even need a tax ID number, so they do stay, you know, private to that extent. They don't prevent creditors at all. There's no creditor advantage to them. Now, continuing on page three, when you have separate entities, like I said, there would be the bus driver company, there would be the bus sales company, there would be the bus maintenance company. Are these truly separate entities? Do they have separate books and records? Do they have separate ownership? A little bit different. If they're sharing offices and they're sharing employees, 
then I like to have one child as a 5% owner of this one and another child as a 5% owner of this one so that they have to be at arm's length. And I like to exchange a few emails every once in a while about, hey, you guys forgot to pay for this thing that we bought you. I'm really watching out so that they're, they're truly separate entities. Because if they're, if they're deemed to be what we call alter egos, then, then it's not going to work.